Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit from Monday. Over here in the Atlantic, we are watching closely Infest 95L over here off the northern Yucatan. We're going to zoom in on this over here, and we have a broad envelope of low pressure extending all the way down the Yucatan and then up towards the western part of Cuba, now getting up towards Key West here, and we have a little little boundary of vorticity all the way through the Florida Straits in here and a lot of the circulation is remaining down here but again the models were too far west and had all the precipitation over here today but notice where all the precipitation is right now and the main area of vorticity is up here near the northern Yucatan it's moved north as we talked about a few days ago and this is now trying to get its act together there is some shearing going on out of the west and so we have most of the thunderstorms being pushed off to the northeast here, but we can see that the circulation is trying to get its act together. We have one vorticity, one vortex rather, coming out to the southwest, and then there's probably another one sitting under here, and eventually this may get a well-defined enough circulation to be called a tropical storm. It's pretty close. They have a recon plane scheduled to go in there later this afternoon, and we'll get a better idea of what's going on here, but we do have tropical storm force winds on the northern side of this coming through the Yucatan Channel and the Florida Straits. Uh, yesterday we had ships reporting 45 mile per hour winds in the Yucatan. So this is a potent little system bringing tropical storm conditions up towards Florida, again, regardless of whether it actually gets named, just like Invest 94L. Though in this case so far, they are right in not naming it yet, but it is getting close. And if we get a better defined southern side here, we're going to be pretty close to having a named storm. And this may verify given what we were talking about a couple days ago. Now, these are the model runs for the system. Again, initialized just north of the Yucatan. Going northeast up into Florida here, we're going to have a front coming down out of the central part of the country, and we'll be picking this up, shearing it as it comes in. This isn't going to ramp up and do a hurricane as it comes ashore or anything like that, but it will be deepening baroclinically. And as it comes up the eastern seaboard, this is going to be a potent little storm coming up here and this is going to be a big extra tropical event for New England and the eastern seaboard in general and lots of heavy rain for Florida as advertised lots of rain coming down from this we've already been getting a lot of that rain coming into southern Florida since yesterday yesterday morning and it's going to be several inches for many places before this is over and I just have to I have to point this out that on the 18th let's see, not the 18th, the 15th of October, two days ago, the models had the system going west into the Bay of Campeche, and the clipper, the climatological statistical model, actually outperformed all of the other models. And by definition, if the models do not do better than the clipper, then they have zero skill on a forecast. And it, these these models had negative skill based on what we saw here. So this is another example, just like Invest 93, that the models can be very wrong, drastically wrong, within even just a 24-hour period. And we have seen this happen with this system. We've had low pressure linger over the Yucatan, but we did not have the main gyre move over here. And instead, like we talked about, we had it drift north and start winding up in here and now we have the possibility of a named storm moving up into Florida like we talked about. So the models are not always going to be the things to rely on. Now if we if we look forward in time here we have the MJO we currently have a lot of green showing upward motion over the Atlantic this remains for the next five to ten days or so and even by day 15 there's not that much sinking motion in here but the MJO is starting to move eastward with time and lose its amplitude on the GFS but you know, really, we're getting we're getting pretty close now to the end of the season. This is October 17th, and it wouldn't be too surprising if we don't see another name come off the list for this year. Now, systems do occur in the Caribbean all the way through November, and it is certainly possible that we will get something down there um, eventually again. But, you know, the jet stream is sagging southward, and it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility to have the season end right now. And that would be nice. And... I wouldn't be too surprised if this is the last big tropical disturbance that we see for a while. We have a little bit of mess at trying to go out here, and then pressures over this whole area are going to be lowering over the next couple of weeks, but it doesn't look like there's a great chance to get any kind of a focused system. We may try to get the Western Caribbean going one more time before it's all said and done, but don't be surprised if this is one of the last systems that you see for this year. So we're starting to wind things down. And by the time we get through the end of Halloween without any more systems, if we don't have anything by then, you know, November doesn't climatologically have that much to offer. So hopefully the season is winding down for us. 
and we will not have to deal with any more storms. We got off fairly lucky this year in the U.S. yet again. You can't really say that with Irene, but in terms of the number of storms that hit the coast, we did get a little bit lucky again, and hopefully that streak continues. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.